Now for a proof that's a bit more unusual, something you may not have thought about before. It's about comparing two infinite sets of numbers. Let's do this first. This is going to be a proof that there are the same number of rational numbers as natural numbers. Now think about what that means. The natural numbers are the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. The rational numbers include all of those numbers, but they also include every fraction. So you might suspect intuitively that there are more rational numbers than natural numbers. Unfortunately, that's not true. There happen to be exactly the same amount, and I'm about to prove that to you now. So, the first question one should ask is the following. How do you compare two infinite sets? I mean, they're infinite after all, so we need to have some way of comparing them that makes sense. So how do we compare two infinite sets like the set of rational numbers, which we've denoted by Q, and the set of natural numbers, which we've denoted by N, boldface N. And I've got two infinites, so I mean two infinite sets here. There we go. Two infinite sets like Q and N. Well, the answer is the following. We first ask the question, how do we do it for finite sets? And then we'll generalize that principle to infinite sets. So first, how do we know, and this is time to think about this, how do we know that the finite sets, and just for an example, the finite sets say, I'll just take these two, A, B, C, and the set containing 1, 2, and 3, how do we know that they both have three elements? Okay, so how do we do this? What is the principle that you've known since grade school? Well, here is the principle that we actually do use, and here's what we want to remark upon so that we can use it for the infinite case. What we do is we exhibit what's called a one-to-one -one correspondence. And if that's too long, a phrase for you, we can call that a matching. If you like, matching's just as good, as long as we know what it means. One-to-one -one correspondence, or matching, we exhibit that between them. And this is what I mean by counting, and this is how it works. One, two, one. And what we do is we list on this side the A, the B, the C, and over here the set elements of the other set, one, two, and three, and here is the matching. Let's suppose A is matched with 1, B with 2, and C with 3. Nothing is missed. Okay, that is the point. And so by that simple argument, that's how we know that two sets have the same number of elements. There is a correspondence we can make between them. Well, the same idea, the very same idea, is used to compare infinite sets. Now, we have to be a little careful how we do it, but it works just fine to compare two infinite sets. Now, this is due to a man named Cantor in 1874. So this is fairly recent as a mathematical idea because people in the past were a bit, little bit leery of dealing with infinite sets. So here is the actual theorem that we are going to prove here. The theorem is, and it just states, restates the title of this section a little bit more compactly, there are the same number, quantity, or the proper word is cardinality, but we'll just use number here. There are the same number of numbers in Q, the rational numbers, as in N, the natural numbers. And here's how the proof will go. What we mu must do is we must exhibit a one-to-one -one correspondence. Let's write that down. We must exhibit, we must show you, a one-to-one -one correspondence between the sets. A one-to-one -one correspondence. That's the matching that we showed for the finite sets on the previous page between Q and N. Well. <laughs> There's one way to put this. Behold, 
I will now show you such a correspondence, and then I will show you why it actually is a correct correspondence. So let's first examine this. Okay? Here is the correspondence as I've pre-drawn. And I'm saying write Q as the following. And here's how my organization works. In the first row, I will write all the fractions box over 1 that have denominator 1. In the second row, I will write all the fractions that have denominator 2. In the third, the ones that have denominator 3, denominator 4 in the next row, and so on to infinity. Now, every fraction has a denominator that is a positive integer, like 1, 2, 3, and 4, because, as you see, I can put the minus, if the fraction is negative, on the top number, which I will do throughout here. Now, what am I doing as I move through here? I'm moving through all the positive and negative integers. I start with 0, which is special, so it's off by itself. And then I have 1 and minus 1, 2 and minus 2. The next will be 3 and minus 3, all the way out to infinity. Same thing here, 1 and minus 1, 2 and minus 2, etc. And you see I repeat that across the top. So by this organization here, what I have is a kind of triangle or a rectangular array if I start at this corner up here and I go off to infinity to the right or down, I get every rational number. Now you may notice that there will be repeats as I go. That's okay. I am getting all the rational numbers possibly re with repeats like 2 over 2 is the same thing as 1 over 1, and that will be the same thing as 3 over 3 down here, and so on. 2 over 4 will be the same thing as 1 over 2. Now, how will I actually count this to show you that there are the same numbers here as with the natural numbers? Well, it works out pretty easily. I will start here. This will be what I will relate to the number 1 in the natural numbers, and then I will go in this fashion. I will then relate this one, come down here, and this one correspond, then I will go back up here, pick up this one, go over here, pick up this one, come down here, pick up this one. All of these have been different, by the way, as we go. Come down here, come down here to 1 fourth, start back up to minus 1 third, and then the next one here is a repeat, so I will go around it to the next one, and then I will continue on. So what I'm doing is a kind of zigzag up and down through this corner of the rectangle, and you see by doing this I will end up eventually getting all of the rational numbers. So that is the process here by which I relate Q to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, etc., the natural numbers. So the correspondence that I get if you were to write it out or begin to write it out just linearly like this will look like this. Here is Q and down here is n, and the order in which I did those was 0, 1, 1 half, minus 1 simplifying 2, minus 1 half, 1 third, etc. And I was associate that with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc. And there is the correspondence that I said I would get, the matching between the two sets. And that matching clearly covers all of Q, and the natural numbers are always uh, going to count up to the very end of those. And so we have shown the uh, one to one correspondence. And so the proof is done. This is all I was required to do. So with that, I will leave you and come back with another proof comparing infinite sets.